Hello everyone, Mike here with CareStream. Welcome back. Uh, took a little bit of time off there, working on some new features for you guys, but we're we're back on the whiteboard today. And today we're actually going to be covering part two of the importance of neutral spine, and that is lordosis, which is also commonly called swayback. So first of all, what is lordosis? It's an overcurvature in the lumbar spine. So before part one, we were talking about kyphosis. Now, lordosis in the lower back here causes tight low back muscles, weak glutes, and it can also increase inflammation in the discs of the low back and the vertebrae to shift forward, which I'll demonstrate in a few minutes. How does it increase your risk of injury? Well, it shifts the center of gravity backward. Now, when we are talking about kyphosis, shifting the center of gravity forward with loading the spine, now we're shifting it behind the center of gravity. And this increases pressure in the low back discs. So when we look at our demonstration here, you can see if we were doing like a barbell squat with that center of gravity line coming through, lordosis pushes the low back curvature inward, causing a anterior rotation of the hips, which increases the curvature in the low back and therefore puts the center of gravity behind uh, the, uh, the spine there. Muscles affected, erector spinae, those run right along the spine there. Glutes and hamstrings, the core belt, so we have the obliques, the abdominals, the transverse abdominals, and you know, like I just mentioned, the weak abs. So what do we do to fix it? Well, I'll just give you a demonstration here. So if we look at the low back, so we've got the T-spine up here, and then we, we obviously we start having the vertebrae. So this is back, front. So we have discs in between the vertebrae. Now what happens is when we start increasing the curvature, we start pushing the disc out. Probable, probable cause, pushing the disc out. So this part here is pushing forward and we're actually off-centering the disc. This, because of that center of gravity coming through here, we have a pressure that's putting more on the back of the vertebrae than on the front, causing that disc to protrude forward possibly, and that's what I was talking about when we we're increasing the pressure into the vertebrae. So it's really, really important that if you start noticing lordosis, um, talk to a chiropractor, exercise therapist, get on the exercise program right away so we can take the pressure off the discs. So now what we'll do is we'll head to the mat, and then I'll show you a few exercises that you can do to start offsetting and even preventing this from even happening. We'll see you on the mat. All right, so we're here on the mat. What we're going to look at doing is we're going to look at three exercises uh, to target the hamstrings and glutes to release strength and activate. Hip flexor stretch to basically negate anything that's encouraging that anterior pelvic tilt. And then the bird dog, which is going to target the low back erector spines, glutes and hamstrings as well. And a bit more of a stability aspect with that one. So when we look at the glute bridge, it's really great for activating glute and hamstrings, which is going to help reverse any sort of anterior tilt. So, set up for the glute bridge. We want the feet about hip to shoulder width apart. And then what we want to do is we want to focus on driving through the heels, pushing up and contracting the glute muscles. Okay, and a way to advance that is you can take a band Hold that across your waist. And as you push up, contracting the glutes, you're going to add a little bit of resistance. Okay, so next thing we're going to look at is the hip flexor stretch. So take a lunge position. And a lot of people make the mistake of actually pushing the front knee forward into a lunge like this. 
you will feel a stretch in the hip flexor, but it's not the greatest for isolation. So what we want to do is we first want to contract the back glute muscle, and then we just want to slightly push the hip forward, keeping that glute contracted, really isolating into the hip flexor there. Okay, lastly is the bird dog. So there's two variations. So it's really important with the bird dog to make sure that you're not overarching the low back, right? We want to avoid arching the low back. So we kind of want to keep the back somewhat flat. And then all we're doing is we're taking that leg and we're pushing it to the back wall. We're not going high with it. We're con pushing it back, and as we're pushing it back, we're contracting this glute. So we're going to alternate legs. Low back is staying neutral. Okay? The way to advance it is to do opposite arm leg to create more of a stability aspect. Still keeping the hips flat and the back neutral. We want to isolate into the hips as we're holding our core nice and tight. So we have the glute bridge, the hip flexor stretch, and the bird dog. Great, great way to get you started to avoiding the lordosis in the low back. Stay tuned for part three, where we talk about actual neutral spine and the importance of it. Thanks.